After a year of researching what was already known of the coronavirus before the COVID-19 outbreak, and after observing the many official responses that were so obviously motivated by political gain over public concern, I decided to make a quick video on the matter, outlining a complex phenomenon into simplistic, relevant points. Typically, the coronavirus is very similar to the common cold and its mild symptoms and frequent mutations. And just like the cold, making a vaccine becomes pointless when any particular batch targeting a particular strain will most likely become ineffective after a single season. Those of you who aren't very old or immune compromised would be better off just coping with getting sick for a few days and naturally developing the antibodies as our ancestors have done for millions of years. And if you would just treat yourself better with a proper diet and regular exercise, then most of us wouldn't even have to worry about exacerbations through comorbidity. Now as for the COVID-19 strain, I suspect that the Wuhan lab experimented with chimeras made with a bat variant, and it was intentionally released upon the Hong Kong protesters in a desperate attempt to quell the revolution before the anti-communist sentiment could take hold in China's mainland, thus risking a second Tiananmen Square incident. Back in November 2019, the Chinese military closed off Hong Kong in a complete siege, and the riots were in full momentum when suddenly thousands of protesters quickly fell ill, complaining of symptoms identical to COVID infection. By January, when the world was made aware of the COVID outbreak, the areas that were most affected were Wuhan, Hong Kong, and every province directly in between. Because this COVID-19 variant was lab splice, and originally adapted for a different species, this made it initially deadlier. All viral strains are the most dangerous when they initially jump from one species to another. However, because of the mild and highly mutable nature of the coronavirus, it quickly adapted to its new human host within several weeks, making it as innocuous as most other strains by the time it had reached Europe. It's very obvious that China was concealing just how many of the citizens had either died or disappeared into quote-unquote quarantine during this time. Much of the information that had been leaked suggests tens of millions. However, a large percentage of deaths weren't due to viral infections, but by execution during a simultaneous political purging of those dissidents who were inspired by the unrest in Hong Kong. That's why... Hundreds of shoddily made hospitals were built, yet none were used for actual treatment. Some were used to detain those who would just disappear afterwards, while most just crumbled away from neglect. The COVID-19 outbreak was initially serious because no one, outside of China that is, were made fully aware of what this particular strain was designed to do. But it seems that no matter how much you tweak the coronavirus for bioweapon purposes, its fast and frequent mutation rate makes it unreliable for such means. This virus naturally wants a dependable host to thrive in, and like most other parasites, destroying one's own home is a very counterproductive strategy. As for the new strain currently wreaking havoc all over India, it'll take some time for us to figure out how much of their overpopulation, their poor sanitation, and their general malnutrition is playing a role in their higher than normal death rates. If it is truly a deadlier strain, was it a natural mutation? Or is the fact that both India and China, fighting for economic supremacy of the Asian market, even to the point of the occasional border skirmish, more than just a mere coincidence? But the coronavirus, regardless of strain, was never, ever, as dangerous to our health as our responses to it. There were various lockdown measures mandated. There were even more reasons given to enact them. And the amount of consequences these mandates manifested upon the public paled the first two combined. You know, you can lecture others about wearing the mask appropriately all you want, but it won't change the fact that the one who put a bullet in his head out of loneliness and losing his livelihood was buried next to the one who drowned in his own mucus. And it was your beloved leaders who precipitated the former just to prevent the latter. So spare me your moral grandstanding. That being said, out of the countless ways these lockdowns caused more harm than good, there are three consequences that I want to highlight as the most important. 
One, the lockdowns decimated small businesses nationwide to over a third, allowing several multinational corporate firms to fill the supply and service vacuum, allowing them to yield record profits. Also, keep in mind that most of said corporations had a hand in designing said lockdown measures, especially the more draconian ones. Two, those politicians who had openly defied Trump's order to restrict international travel in before this virus had reached us, and those who had also created spikes in COVID deaths due to housing COVID patients in elderly facilities, were also the ones quick to capitalize on the national epidemic that they helped to create in order to topple a political rival during a crucial election year. Many sacrificed for little gain and for just a handful of fucking traitors. 3. Those who have been pushing for mandatory vaccines on all citizens nationwide, using experimental serums that have not been adequately tested beforehand, are poised to make more money from said authoritative policies than from any other medical treatment venture in history. I guess that explains why one would rush such a mostly unnecessary cure before natural herd immunity could take care of this mostly mild problem. You know, we live in a magical age where all of the world's knowledge lies at your fingertips. And in spite of all the active censorship from those who curtail information to suit political goals, the truth will always find its way to the light. Take some of the time usually spent on indulging in entertainment and escapism from the daily grind and learn how to research for your own sake. You can no longer afford to place a childlike trust upon self-proclaimed experts that measure your life's worth in dollars, either profited or commissioned. Trust no one who isn't a proven intimate. Only you know what's best for you and your family and only you can be reliable enough to provide the benefit. In an age when it's big business to manufacture the disease and then convince you to buy their snake oil, the lie that profits one can easily bury the other, and happily by their own hand, if that cure was sung as enchanting as the crisis was scary.